and six. So we know where she came from. New Jersey knows that one of their young falcons is now nesting somewhere else. They know how many young she has, et cetera, because of the beans. We would love to put radio transmitters on these birds, but that costs a lot more money than we can. So we have to settle for what we can do. Now, I'm going to do one more thing, and that is that there is an army of volunteers here in Philadelphia who are tracking these birds, uh, who uh, saw the eggs being laid, who saw the, the uh, eggs hatching, and so we know exactly what the dates are for these birds. And they're going to continue to watch as these birds fledge, which means that they take their first flight. And so I'm going to do something that will make it even easier than the color-coded band to determine which bird is which. And that is I'm putting the thin strip of colored tape on the band on the right leg. So this one will be red. So later on, the observers can say, red is fledged and she's flying well. White is fledged too, but she's not flying too well. She still doesn't have it. And I, see, I haven't seen blue or yellow yet. Okay, so this one is red. I made it a thin strip so we don't cover up the numbers on there. So anyone who finds this who doesn't know about bird bands will be able to see that there are numbers on there. And they'll also be, be able to see that there's a uh, toll-free phone number to call to report the band, and there's a web address that they can go to to report the band. So then we'll know where this bird has been found. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to do before we put this bird back in the band is to dust it with this uh, powder. And, uh, yes, the parasites really go all over the bird, but they especially like to be in the wing case. So if you can lay it further back up, yeah, that's good, that's good. We'll put it in the wing case here. The axilla, axillae, for those of you who like the Latin terms. And we'll do the other wing. Last year on a bridge, on one particular nest, there were five birds and they were covered with kerosene. So I dusted them like this. And then a couple days later, and now I'm going to put some on the, on the breast as well. So I dusted them with the powder. And then a couple days later, I had to return to that nest to give them some more medical treatment, and there was not a single bug on the birds. So this is very effective. So now we'll put her back in the bag and go in head first. Okay. Okay, lady, you're done. <laughs> and boy, you got some bling which will make you the envy of the neighborhood. All the other birds will look at you and say, where can I get some of that? So now we'll move on to bird number two. How are you doing, bird number two? Now, once one bird has bugs, usually they all have bugs. So whether or not I see uh, bugs on the other birds, I will uh, treat them with the same uh, uh, flea and tick powder. Because that's how the bugs spread. Some of them, like the blood sucking flies, they can fly from bird to bird, but lice and, and mites can't fly. They just jump on the bird from another bird. And so they're shared with mom and dad and all their siblings. So this bird number two is 790 grams, that's 790 which also tells us that at this age, this is a female. It's another girl. Okay. Now if I had pink tape, I guess I could give her pink, but I don't, so I won't. No, no pink. We have red, white, blue, yellow, and green. How you doing, big girl? Oh, look. Let's have a look at you. First, we'll start with the mouth. Yeah, let's have a look in your mouth. There you go. That's a girl. That's a girl. 
Let's have a good look. Come on, put your tongue down, please, so I can get a better look. Oh, come on, lower your tongue. Thank you. Just a little bit of gentle The mouth is nice and clean. The eyes are good. Eyes are nice and good. Nice and bright, no deformities, no dehydration. It's a nice cool day, so that helps. The ears are clean. Okay. So here's bird number two, and I'm just going to gently peel off the bag. There you go, lady. Oh, look at those nice big feet. Grandma, how big your feet are. All the more to catch pigeons with, my dear. Okay. Her feet are good. I'm going to use a leg gauge even though I don't need to. I can simply see, and B is size 7A, as all females are. Her flight muscles are developing nicely. Her vent is clean. I'm going to check her wing tip. We'll find bugs here because yes, we, we've got bugs. His brother and sister have uh, sisters have nicely contributed bugs, and I forgot. There's a measurement I forgot to take on bird number one. So when we're done with this, I will do that, and that is to measure their tail feathers. Okay? This is we know exactly how old they are because the volunteers saw them hatch. But this is a good indicator of age as well. At this particular age, from day 13 to day 21, these tail feathers emerge from the sheaths. The sheaths, can you see the sheaths? They look like soda straws. That's how the feathers grow. They develop inside the sheaths, they emerge from the sheaths, and then eventually the sheaths just kind of breaks down. Between day 13 and 21, they emerge from the sheaths at two millimeters a day. And this one has emerged 17 millimeters, so that's 21 days. Bingo. Uh, and I'll tell you why I'm make, taking that measurement, even though we know exactly when they hatched, is to make sure that this uh, measure is accurate with other birds when we didn't see them hatch. And so it, since it fits perfectly for this bird, we know that for other birds in this measurement, it's still reliable. After day 21, it's no longer reliable. Um, I'm getting out of order here. The next thing I'm going to do now is to ban this bird. We'll give her the same two kinds of bands that we gave her sister. Did you do the leg part? Hmm? Did you do the leg? Uh, the leg is size 7A, and the legs and feet are, are good. They're developing well. Uh, no abnormalities. Okay, so she is 1947-07092, and that should be the next number in sequence. Yeah. Oh, come on, you sound like a chicken. You're not a chicken. There you go, big girl. Now, what you're hearing is your alarm call. And I'm not hurting these birds. And when I'm squeezing the band here, I'm not squeezing the leg, I'm squeezing the band. So the reason they're alarm calling is they don't know what's happening. And it might be dangerous. It's not, but they don't know that. So they're alerting brother and sisters that there's something going on. They're alerting mom and dad that there's something going on.
and somebody must have said a magic word because it just quieted down. This particular group of lock-on bands doesn't have the proper bends in it, so it makes it harder for me to get it on the leg properly. I'm almost done with this string, and I will be glad when I move on to a new string. So as I say, I'm squeezing the band. I'm not squeezing the leg. Okay. And you can see that that moves freely, and I can feel that there are no sharp, sharp edges. That's what we want. So then the other leg will get the Then I'm going to close this out for now and I'll come back live when they're putting the, um, the chicks back in the nest outside of City Hall.